Hi everybody. So in this video, we're going to look at how to describe transformations on a grid. We're going to work through four questions. And if you want to work along with me, you can download a copy of a PDF from my website. I'll leave a link below. Okay, so for example one, we told that triangle A is reflected in the X axis to give triangle B. And then triangle B is reflected in the line X equals one to give triangle C. We need to describe a single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle C. So if we start with reflecting triangle A in the X axis, this is the line when Y equals zero. So this line here. And then we reflect each vertex on the object through this mirror line. So this point goes to here. And then this point goes to here. And this point goes five away through the mirror line. So it goes to here. And then we create the image, which we're going to label B. And then we need to reflect triangle B in the line X equals one to give triangle C. So X equals one is this line. So this point passes two units through and on the other side, this point goes four units to the other side. And then this one goes again, four units. So it goes to here. And then we recreate this image. And we'll label this C. Okay, so now we're asked to describe the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle C. So we need to ask ourselves, is it a rotation that maps A onto C? Is it a translation which moves the shape but keeps the same orientation? Or is it a reflection? And we know it's not an enlargement. Well, you can see this is being turned by 180 degrees. So we need to find the center. So we use our tracing paper. We mark on the vertices. And then it's a case of trying to find the center. So we know it's going to be 180. If we try this point, 2, 1, we'll draw the line. And then we want this line to be rotated to here. If we turn that tracing paper 180, you can see that's not quite right. So if we go back, we can try a lower point. We'll try this point, 2, 0. And then we'll rotate the tracing paper and that's not quite right so if we go back we'll try one zero rotate 180 degrees and you can see that's perfect okay so we need to describe it as a rotation 180 degrees about the point one zero okay let's try example two okay so for example two we've been asked to describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle a onto triangle b so to go from this triangle to this triangle so perhaps you want to try this question yourself you can pause the video and when you come back we'll go through the solution Okay, so welcome back if you had a go. So when you describe a transformation, we need to decide whether it's a rotation, translation, reflection, or enlargement. Well, it's clearly not an enlargement because the two triangles are congruent. It's not a translation because this has a different orientation than this one. And it's not a reflection because you can see they've not been flipped and they've been rotated. So this is a rotation. So now we need to find the direction and the center. So if we use our tracing paper, we can mark off the vertices on object A. And then to find the center, we can try the point one, two, and we'll try and turn this 90 degrees in this direction. So that's clockwise. We'll rotate our tracing paper and you can see that's too high. If we go back, 
we'll drive at point one one. 90 degrees, we're moving this line to this one in a clockwise direction. We'll rotate it again, and you can see that's perfect. So it's a rotation, 90 degrees, clockwise, about the point 1, 1, this point here. We need to mention all three. Rotation, 90 degrees, clockwise, about the point 1, 1. Okay, let's try another question. So in example three, we've been asked to describe fully the single transformation that maps shape P onto shape Q. And we know it's either a rotation, a translation, a reflection, or enlargement. And we can see that the two shapes are similar in that the interior angles are the same, but Q is enlarged from P. So this will be an enlargement. This means we need to find the center and the scale factor. So to find the center, we need to draw a ray from the matching vertices. So on this vertex in Q, and this vertex in P. And then we draw a ray through both of them. Then we pick a different vertex. So on this one and this one. I could have picked this one and this one. And then we draw another ray. And you can see that the two rays intersect at this point. And this will be the center, but we can check this. We'll choose a third vertex. And again, it's passing through the center. So we know it's an enlargement. The center is eight zero. We'll right now at the center. And then we need the scale factor. Well, we can see the base of P is two and the base of Q is six so the scale factor will be two times three to make the six so the scale factor will be three okay so in a question like this on the exam you get three marks one for enlargement one for center one for scale factor let's try one more question so for example four we've been asked to describe fully the single transformation that maps a onto b so this one on onto this one, and then from B onto C, so this one to this one. So perhaps you want to try these yourself, you can pause the video, and when you come back, we'll go through the solution. Okay, so welcome back if you had to go. So to transform object A onto image B, you can see the two shapes are congruent, so it's not an enlargement, and they've got the same orientation, so it must be a translation. We have moved A to B. So if it's a translation, we need a translation vector. So we can pick a point on A, and we want to get to the same point on B. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. This will have negative 6, because we're moving to the left. And then we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 again. And because we're going down, this is negative 6. So to go from A to B, it's a translation with a translation back to negative 6, negative 6. And then from B to C, well, you can see that B has been flipped to C. So this will be a reflection. And if it's a reflection, we need to find a mirror line. And this would be the line which is halfway between the two. So you can see the distance between them is 6. So the mirror line will be at this point. If I sketch that, this will be the line where the value of y at any point along this line is always 1. So it's a reflection in the line y equals 1. Okay. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you did find that helpful, please like and subscribe. And you can download the full lesson and the PDF that accompanies this video from my website, mrmathematics.com. I'll leave a link below.